Runk. <laughs> Hey guys, I'll be in Kelowna. It's coming. To, that that th- those tickets are going crazy. I don't know if it's sold out. We keep opening up more levels to it. Vancouver, I'll be there February tenth. Second show. Uh, there's two shows. Rochester, New York. Kitchener, Ontario. Uh, Shreveport, Louisiana. Houston, Texas. And then I got a bunch of new dates that I just added: Fort Wayne, Saginaw, Victoria, Aug- Augusta, North Charleston, Chattanooga. Anyway. Uh, that's what's up. And then also you can watch my special right now, chrislea.com, grow or die. And, uh, I appreciate you. So thanks. And here we go with the new episode of Congratulations. It is, uh, I also want to say, you know, guys, look, the Patreon is on and popping. You get a fr- uh, you get an, a, a, an extra episode every uh, month and, uh, and 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 extended episodes. Go on over and sign up, patreon.com slash crystalia. It's on and popping, as they would as as Young MC would say in 1999 or whatever it was. On and popping and this on and popping and this on and popping and this on on and popping. That was the song, and it was so bad. And I remember liking it so much because I was young, and now. I guess, I, you know what? I'm going to listen to it after this. So there you go. i just giving you my schedule. That's all it is, really, just giving you my schedule. Um, uh, this podcast is really just, honestly, giving you my schedule and what happened and everything about um, uh, w- what happened in my past and then what I'm going to do. So whatever. I don't know. It's already boring. Yes, dude. But anyway, um, there's a storm here in L.A. There's a storm out here. There's a big storm. And... Um, it's actually crazy. My mom texted me. Let's see. Look, here we go. Look at my mom. My mom, you look, like all moms, my mom says something over and over again. And like all moms would say, the reason why they do that is because you never listen, right? But I listen. Okay, I'm 43 now. Uh, and uh, I listen. And the, the the media is making it out to be like this storm is crazy uh, outside. And I guess it is. But also, Los Angeles just kind of doesn't... Look, there are things that are happening. I think in every rain, probably people slip and fall and hit their head and die and stuff. Or, or drown, you know. Or, you know, a gas line gets hit by a, a, a thing and then the guy's got to come out. I, I think that that happens every rain. But also in LA, when it happens, it's it, it's so rare that it happens. I guess that it makes news, and it's like storm alert, storm watch, 2024, storm view, storm gander, storm 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 watch, 2024. Guy got stuck in a sewer, storm gaze, 2024, and um, storm sight, and so uh. So they'll do that, and then you'll be like, whoa, all right, hey, can't go, can't go, end of sentence, because can't go anywhere, right? People might be like, where? No, that's the end of the sentence. Can't go. So um, I, uh, I, 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 we stay inside, and then all of a sudden, we look, Uber, yes, dude, Uber Eats, Postmates, DoorDash, they're all canceled. Yes, dude, they're all canceled because of the storm. Storm watch, storm sight, storm view. 2020, 2024, storm gander. And so, um, so we're like, all right, well, we're well, okay. What do we do, dude? We just, I guess we just sit in the house. You know, I got two kids, got the nanny with us, got a friend over last night, and storm gaze hit, and he stayed over. Because he was like, well, I guess I'm not. It was David Sullivan. He's like, I guess I ain't going to leave. I don't know. You know, I I don't need to ombre up the hill if I have to come back. So um, so we went to, uh, so so we were in, in our house, fell asleep, raining like cats and dogs, all good, you know. Woke up. David's in my house, I guess, still. Didn't know. Kristen was like, wake up. David's here. Also, you have therapy. Yes, got stuff wrong with me. So I went to do therapy on Zoom. And also, also, um, 
the thing about it is I thought the, the Wi-Fi was going to crash. Didn't. Thought the power was going to go out. Didn't. Got a generator anyway. It's all good. But um, so we're doing it. We wake up and I turn on the news. They're showing like pictures of cars sunk into like ditches, a house that fell down. And like a guy's talking to the camera like, yeah, it was pretty dangerous and scary. And I... And you're like, oh, okay, we got to call uh, uh, Bruce Willis and Ben Affleck because it's storm gaze. And so I'm like, well, what are we going to do for food? No Postmates. Yes, no DoorDash. Yes, dude. Uh, so my wife, I'm like, you know, look, why don't we take the, wait, look, I got some nice cars. Why don't we take the Audi though? Right. Why don't we take the, it's a nice, look, it's a nice car, dude, but it's, an SUV. Why don't we let the nice SUV dude's business out in the rain? Why don't we why don't we let the nice SUV do its business out in the rain? All right. Why don't we let it do its business out in the rain? Me behind the wheel, and I'll avoid the piles. I won't even look at my phone while I'm driving, which I normally do not to my wife. But I didn't because it's storm gaze. All right. So she says, All right, here's the list of stuff you got to get to the grocery store. I don't want to do it, dude. I hate getting stuff at the grocery store. Dude, who hates stuff getting stuff at the grocery store? Me, why? Oh, you, you always get the wrong thing. The audience, ding, 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 ding. Oh, sorry. We didn't want that kind of cream cheese. Oh, you got the wrong kind. But what kind did you what, what kind did you did you want? Oh, it's actually right next to it. You looked at it with your fucking stupid face, and then you got the wrong kind. All good. <laughs> You got the wrong hair. And so, bro, these are the things my wife tells me to get. Check it. So so we decide, I decide to go out and brave, brave the storm, okay? Now I'm like driving to the, uh, what do you call it? Um, driving to the uh, m- supermarket, market, whatever. Hey. L.A. Hey. It's fine. Dude, I know that a car got sunk in the thing, and I know that there was there were mudslides, and I know that maybe like a five-year-old drowned in the rain, but hey, that happens every rain. My heart goes out. God bless. Sucked you lost your car, daughter, whatever it is. But like, also, when you ride around, you're just, you're just like, oh, it's not that bad. And I go like this, hey, but hey, LA, there's Seattle though. Hey, LA, there's Vancouver. You're all good. Okay. Went, did the shopping, came, uh, didn't even get coffee, dude. Cause I was like, eh, I don't want to went home, dude. There was part of the roadblock, part of the road that I went to take home was blocked. Still turned around. I got pissed off because I wanted to do, they go like this. My nanny says, don't take this one road. It's going to be bad. You know what your boy thinks. Taking it, right? Because I'm taking it because I got to see what it's like, dude. Right? So I, I want I the SUV. I want to let it do what it do. I want to let it do its business. I want the SUV letting it do its business. So I'm behind the wheel. I'm like, I'm going to go on the road that she said not to go down because, dude, I'm gonna go check it out. I wanna. I like. I'm. I'm the kind of guy who likes making the splashes. You know. I don't avoid them. I go right into them, and I let it <laughs> on the window. You know, like an idiot. Do you do that like a jackass? I'm 43, and I'm just like, <laughs> oh, oh, and then I get a little bit scared. Right? There's always that one little hydroplane, and then my wife every time it rains. Did you know that if you have to hydroplane, you, you're supposed to turn into the, the the spin always? And I'm like, I, <laughs> I know, honey. You, you say it. You always say it. And also, it's common knowledge. And then I'm like, wait, if a hydroplane happened, guess what, dude? I'm cooked. I'm cooked. Because I go like this. Turn in. What way's in? What way's in? Out? Out? In? In? Turn in? Is that this way? You're all... <laughs> That's me. Because you know turn in. But what is turn in? Because you're going that way. The back end is coming out this way. But the front end's going in this way. Does that mean turn into the front way? Or the turn into... Wh- where you're supposed to be in the back or what, dude? I just, whatever it is, I'm hitting an embankment. So um, I did the, I did the, you know, the splash. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. 
You know, I'm alone in my car, 43 year old man with a fucking st- huge jacket on. Cause I never get a chance to wear it. And, um, get to the middle of where, uh, the, uh, our friend said, don't take down the road completely blocked off. Yes. Dude, completely blocked off. So pissed off. Got to turn back around, go the way that she told me to come the friend. And so I did that. But, uh, this is the stuff my wife told me to get. Half and half, cream cheese, Brussels sprouts, three, uh, five pounds of Yukon gold potatoes, and vegetables, and whatever vegetable you want with salmon tomorrow. Now, check this out, dude. I get there. First of all, I went to Erewhon, all right? Erewhon is a high-end uh, grocery store in LA. It's so high-end that they did a collab with Balenciaga, and you're just like, hey, you're basically sprouts, chill. And uh, they sell like Erewhon hats for like $500, but... But Erewhon Balenciaga hats. So I get there, Erewhon. Your aisles are too are, your aisles are too narrow. Take out one of the aisles, make them bigger. All right, make them all bigger. They're too narrow, dude. There was this old lady at the fucking Erewhon, and every time I went to go down the aisle, she was coming through the other end. And because I'm younger and spry, I got to be like, oh, okay, I'll go back around, and I go back around because she wasn't doing it at all. She, dude, one time she came up to me behind me, and she just goes like this, uh, and I look back. She goes, uh, and she just fucking, I moved a little bit. Because she wasn't going to talk and I'm just younger. So I go, oh, sorry. Can you text them to turn that down? I mean, it's so loud. Hey! Just uh, open it up. I'll I'll scream out. Hey, uh, Kristen. Hey, Kristen. Can you turn that down? Whatever's blaring. No, 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 no. The music. Whatever that is. Yeah. Um, can you turn it down? She said, that was just the baby laughing. Like 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 Billy has a knob on him. Um, uh, yeah, yeah, the equalizer. The equalizer on his leg. Um, so so I'm, I'm at Arrow One, dude. And the, the, the fucking, God damn it, dude. I don't understand. The, 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 the thing barely fits. The car barely fits. But anyway, I get the fucking stuff. And I go to one of the guys. All, they are not short on workers at all. Okay. They have so many workers there. They're like, um, what's that one place where you go and there's just so many people that work there? What the fuck is it? Uh, can't remember. Yes. Fine. It's all good. I need to get Um, so I asked the guy, I said, Hey man, where's your cream cheese? Because he's right there, dude. And fuck it. You know? Cause when I go to a grocery store, I'm like, I battle, I battle on, I'm, I, I battle. Like, do I ask them where it is or do I just use looking? Because that's such, that's so annoying, dude. If I worked at a grocery store and people were just like, where's the milk? I'd be like, hey, did you go to the ends? It's probably uh, one of the ends, right? Um, but so uh, I'm, th- I'm there, I'm there, but then also he's right there. So I just, I'm, I'm, you know, I, I say, hey, bud, where's the cream cheese? And the guy looks at me and he says, ah, it's over where the milk is. And I said, without even thinking, oh, and started walking nowhere. You know why? Because I don't know where the milk is. But that was the end of the conversation. And the reason why I knew it was the end of the conversation is because I already spun out and walked away and started walking away from the dude. Okay. So I'm not going to go back and be like, oh, wait, hold on. Where's the milk? The guy fucked me. And that dude is a gangster. And that's how I would be the person who worked at the... It's always it's always fascinating how much somebody at a supermarket that works at a supermarket they know where fucking everything is. Bro, you could be like uh strawberry chapstick. You're like, "Oh, dude, 9 at the bottom over on the right." And you're just like, "Oh, are you rain man?" You just fucking waffles, waffles, peppermint waffles down 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 there to the left, peppermint waffles. Say things that don't exist, don't know where they are. Foot candy? Down, over, up on the top, up above the toilet paper, foot candy. Um, yeah, so I got this cold brew from Erewhon and it sucks. That's all good. Everyone's so nice at Erewhon though. It's 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 kind of 
It's nice, but why do I also, why am I also annoyed, dude? Like, what the fuck, dude? Like, I was talking to my therapist today, and he was like, well, you know, I was talking, we're getting real deep with him today, and I was talking to him, and I was like, well, yeah, you know, you know, stuff in my past, like, I, you know, I, I've, I've betrayed, you know, I've betrayed partners and this and that. And he was like, well, you know, uh, something that comes to mind is he was like, let me ask you, uh, you know, and I hate to be so, you know, cause so right off the bat, it was in the beginning of the beginning of the, um, session. And he said, but, uh, look, you're a lucky guy. You know, you got your wife. You're really lucky. Let me ask you something. Do you think you deserve her? And I go. And I'm like, but it's just Monday. And part of me is like, are you saying I don't deserve her? Because Sansy. But then I go a little bit further and think he's asking me the question. And then I'm just like. And I'm like, I have a pretty healthy ego. But then I'm like, if you have a pretty healthy ego, it's because you're insecure. Everything is the same, right? If you scream out, fuck gays, it's probably because you got some pent up stuff and want to get blown in the butthole, right? Who's just on the level? Dude, so he says, do you think you deserve her? And I go, I don't, I, I don't, I don't. That was my answer. Dude, I'm 43, I should know this shit. But I'm just like, I was trying to relate that to the supermarket thing. Wait, and I was mad at, I don't even know anymore. But it's just like, dude, why is it so hard to know how you feel, bro? I was telling this to my therapist too. I was like, I don't know, dude, and I don't know how I feel, and I, 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 it's so hard, and I do so much therapy, and I was thinking about this, I was thinking about this, like, the other day, I was like, dude, it's so hard, it gets harder, and I don't want, I was like, I just don't want, what if I just stopped, you ever think of that, what if you just stopped working on your problems, and you just were committed to being absolutely close-minded and absolutely set in your ways like one of those 1940s fucking dads, you know? We don't do that. We talk about the weather. How are you? Tell me how you are. Well, I got something bothering me. No, no. How are you? Now say, uh, now say in a good way. How are you? What good are you? And tell me about the weather. You know what I mean? Everything's great. I need to be a 1940s dad, dude. And just everything's fun because if you're that closed off, because also they live forever, dude. You know? They lived so long. And I know that life expectancy is longer now, but it's like, dude, not really because more shit kills you now too. Because Monsanto or whatever the hell it's called. What the hell is it called? What is it? Monsanto. Monsanto, whatever it is, dude. You, you know, it's, it's corn syrup and everything. But anyway, um, so, because, and I was like, what if I just did that? What if I just, I looked at Chris, and I was like, what if I just stopped therapy? And, I, and she was like, that's my nightmare. And I was like, I know, but like, think about this. And I just, like, I could just live, like, if a problem happened, it just goes, shh. You know, because you can just kind of like not do problems. And I know that sounds pretty fucked up, but like you kind of can as a guy. You can kind of just be like, that's a problem. And you just go, they'll be fine. And, 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 I, you know, I talk about this on stage now, but like you can, you, you know, of course you can just be that way. And then you have to deal with, you know, a really painful death when you're like 82, right? Because it becomes, that stuff becomes like, cancer you know it like becomes like your thoughts of like fuck it i'm not dealing with the bullshit hi how you doing how's the weather 
that becomes straight up, you'll just be like, it'll become any disease. It doesn't even matter. Like you'll be a white guy with sickle cell at the end. It's just like, you can't not. So I guess you got to work it all out. I don't know, man. I'm trying. What am I talking about, dude? I, I, don't, I don't even know. <sighs> we should talk about the news and stuff. I guess the Grammys happened. And uh, people were pa pissed, pissed off because of Taylor Swift. Dude, how, imagine being Taylor Swift and just anything you do is under a microscope. Like from everyone. Like she took the award. She won an award for best whatever it is. And then went to get it from Celine Dion. And and I wouldn't say she snubbed her, but she grabbed the award and was like shocked and then like hugged someone else. And they were like, oh, she disrespected the queen, you know? And she's got medical issues and she disrespected fucking... My heart will go on, uh, right? That's what she sings. And... Uh, Later on, there's like pictures of them like hugging and dancing together and shit. But people are like, wow, fuck Taylor Swift. <laughs> hey, dude, you're a loser. Okay. Also, you don't need, you don't, God, dude. Oh, my favorite part was there was a response. Somebody was like, wow, look what Taylor Swift did. What a shitty, uh, uh, disrespectful thing to do to the queen. And then somebody under that said, give us 10 minutes. We'll have an excuse. And it was a, and she had an icon of uh, Taylor Swift on her thing. And then after that, she was like, oh, this is what happened. I, I, I. It's like, man, I need people to do that shit for me, bro. I need, I need people to do that shit for me in my house when I get in arguments with my wife. Just, I need Swifties in my house that are for me, like retired Swifties. They just come over to my house and my wife is like, I told you to you, doing the dishes is your job. If you don't do that, how am I going to trust you to do other things? And there's a, actually, there's much difference between doing the dishes and then also like, you know, saying that you're going to go do this. And then that happens in the Swiftie there, just right, right fucking just, I need a retired Swiftie at my fucking house, dude. I don't know. But it's Stormwatch. Anyway, she was everyone was mad at her, but she's fine. It's fine. Everything's fine. Everything's always fine. Dude, let's oh, let's fucking look that up. This is the thing that we were gonna look it up. Uh how about how the the where's the video of that? Try my product. Do we have it? Yeah, he sends it over. Dude. There's this infomercial. How about when you realize you remember an infomercial when you were young and you go, oh shit, today's going to be a day. You go, oh shit, today's going to be nostalgia city. Might as well fucking start getting some, <coughs> might as well get rainbow bright and some dipping dots and a razor scooter. I, I remembered this the other day. Dude, the end of this. You need to know the how last to second computer. of this is so ill, dude. I'm gonna play the whole thing. It's two minutes. God, now I'm gonna play the whole. Th I'm not gonna play the whole thing. Uh, this is pretty amazing. I'm gonna start playing. Maybe I'll play the whole thing, dude. This is just. Why can I watch shit like this over and over again, dude? Here we go. Do you need to know how to operate a computer? Yeah, I might. I'm. You might know this, okay? But this guy is. Do you need to know how to operate a computer? Hi, I'm John Shear, CEO and founder of Video Professor. Dude, Video Professor, like it's a fucking someone in Arkham Asylum. Hello, I'm the Video Professor. I will show you how you're going to die on a VHS and then do that. It seems like everywhere I go these days, somebody is recognizing me as the video professor. Ah, where's recognizing, dude? Hey, are you, are you the video professor? Imagine getting mistaken for the video professor. Are you the video professor? Oh, are you fucking a little insane lunatic? You know, that's because we've been teaching people how to operate computers for over 14 years now. Bro, when did this come out? Over 14 years? No, 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 that was, yeah, way longer. You just pay a small shipping and I'm handling. going to the end. The reason I'm going to do this is because I know that once you try my product, you'll come back to us for all your computer learning needs. And if this doesn't teach you how to run a computer, I'll even refund your shipping and handling. Dude, uh, the end of this, here we go, we're going to the end. 
this is so gangster, the end of this. So what do you got to lose? Try my product? <laughs> Dude! <laughs> Try my product? Dude, we would say that all the time. Refund your shipping and handling. So what do you got to lose? Try my product? Call Video <laughs> Professor now for your free Dude, lesson. Choose it from funny? Windows, Word, Quicken, the Internet, product. and many more. Call in the next 10 minutes, and this free gift will be yours. The Anytime Organizer is the calendar, diary, wow, address book, sucks, and journal you know? on your PC, so you'll never miss an appointment again. Remember, you must call now to get your free CD Trump and product. the extra free gift. So don't delay. Call now. Call 1-800-409-2659. How many pe different people tell need to say call now? There were three people. So what do you got to lose? Try my product. Why does he say it like that? So what do you need to lose? Trauma product? Dude. Wow. <laughs> John Shearer, dude. Fucking absolutely hung himself. You know what I mean? For sure hung himself. 12 years ago. Please try my product. Oh, the video professor. Such a mouthful. Call it something cool, you know? Um, amazing. And then fucking Killer Mike got arrested. No, he didn't get arrested, but he got a little bit arrested, right? He went and won eight Grammys and they put handcuffs on him for a little bit. <laughs> it's like, ah, just play him in. They were just trying to remind, they were just trying to remind him who, who's boss, you know? Okay, no, no, I know, but we're just playing. But we are the cops though, you know? And there is still racism, so. I'm not saying they're racist, but I'm just saying, like, that. that's a, a you know, a joke you, I could make right now if I wanted to, that I did. <sighs> Check out Creamy E Girl on YouTube and TikTok. Uh, go to my page if you want to purchase a 10 word ad or shout out holler.baby slash Crystalia. Um, <clears throat> took a little bit of a break. I needed to get some air in here. But, um, <clears throat> oh man, I saw, uh, you know what I did last night? I can't not. I can't not. So I did. But I watched Beekeeper with. Um, first of all, Beekeeper is a movie with Jason Statham. It sounds like it, 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 it. It's it's an indie film with Francis McDormand. You know, it, you say, "Oh yeah, we're going to watch Bee, Beekeeper." The last thing it sounds is is like a uh, an action packed, which it is, um, movie where there's martial arts in it. <laughs> Dude, I love Jason Statham, and I guess I'm out of touch. Because I just seem, to me, it seemed like it was going to be, I, I watched this movie, I turned it on last night, David was over, this was when he was over and it was raining, he was like, man, let's watch Beekeeper, man. And I was like, all right, I wasn't really in the mood for it, but let's do it. I, I... I expect it to be... I know a lot of these guys are making... Look, this is a regular Jason Statham movie. I understand. I know a lot of these guys are going to be doing the John Wick thing. Now, you know, you got Bricklayer. You got uh, Relentless. You got uh, the other one with um, the other guy. Just a lot of these guys who are getting older are doing their thing. Jason Statham's still kind of at the top of his game. And he's, what, 50? I don't know. But um, this is just like a John Wick movie where he plays a beekeeper. This is so... The way they tried to shoehorn Beekeeper into this regular action movie that had didn't need to have anything to do with beekeeping was unreal, dude. It was unreal. So first of all, the movie opens up, he's a beekeeper, all right? Doing his beekeeping and shit, just keeping bees all around. And then the woman that he rents the shed from that lives down the way uh, gets a link to a thing that says, oh, your, your computer's compromised. So she calls and basically gets swindled out of $2 million. And then she kills herself, okay? Then she, uh, you know, shoots herself in the head and dies, all right? And then uh, Jason Statham is like, ah, my bees, fuck it. Yeah, I gotta go inside and thank her for something or whatever. Give her some honey. Goes over to give her some honey or whatever. I don't even remember what it is. Finds her dead body and he's like, oh no. And then... The FBI is already there and say, freeze, what are you doing here? You find out it's one person that's there, the woman, the FBI, who is the woman, who is the daughter of the lady that just killed herself, okay? So already, already, oh, and she doesn't live there, by the way. They live like somewhere, you know, it look, I don't know where, but like it looks like upstate New York, wherever wherever they live. They, 
they um they find she finds him there and so already she doesn't live there the daughter so already first scene i'm like why is she there it's never explained. She's just showing up and, and oh my mom, my mom's dead. She goes and he's like, I'm I'm here for you. I'm not I'm not I'm you know I'm a good guy. I rented the shed from her. I'm a beekeeper. I keep keeping bees everywhere. And I don't know if I fucking need to go check out my bees, right? So then they're like, this guy, this beekeeper, Jason Statham. He's like, he finds out that she got swindled out of money and then committed, you know, pow in her head. And so he goes and burns the call center down. Dude, he goes there in this, he looks dope, okay? He's got a regular jacket and cool pants, but he has a baseball hat on. And it looks, it's so weird when he wears this baseball hat that it's like so out of place. Like it's just regular Navy baseball hat. There's nothing on it. It looks like NPC shit, and it's on a little bit wrong, and I can't explain why it's on a little bit wrong, but it just is not sitting right on his head. And the fact that nobody was like, let's just take the hat off, and wore it well over halfway through the movie. And Jason Statham is Jason Statham because you want to see his shiny bald head kicking ass. He had his hat on. It looked like he had a cake under his hat the whole time, and w- and he walks up to this uh, call center, and these two... Uh, um, henchmen come out and they're like you're not getting in there no matter what and he's like yes i am and he was like well what are you here for he's like uh, he had two gasoline can canisters and he says i'm gonna burn the fucking place down and you're not gonna stop me and then proceeds to go do that of course this is a beekeeper right so we find out that he is a beekeeper but the real beekeeping is there is an underground faction that protects the world when laws aren't good enough and they call themselves the hive and they're all beekeepers from around the world that gets thrust into situations to, to save people okay so we find out that he's a defective beekeeper in the hive and the beekeeper society I mean, dude, finds out that he's still tr- doing stuff in their name, and now they go to try and kill him. So now, the evil entity that is the, um, because there are all these henchmen in the, uh, what do you call it, in the uh, call center, like they're swindling people from all over the world. Now they're going after Jason Statham to try and kill him, and then the beekeepers are going after Jason Statham and trying to kill him. So. Everyone's trying to kill Jason Statham. And Jason Statham doesn't get hit once until the end of the movie, which is fine. I don't care. Action movies are action movies. But the way they they kept on... Like, they had Jeremy Irons in this fucking thing for some reason. And he was just like... He was the guy that came in the, th- in the movie that would be like, where the movie would happen, and then it, somebody would need to explain something, and then Jeremy Irons would have a scene with Josh Hutcherson and be like... Well, the thing about the beekeepers is that that's the thing about beekeepers is that they don't stop. They don't stop until the job is done and he won't stop until the job is done. And say you, he goes up against a Delta Force member. That Delta Force member dies because the beekeeper is the most lethal. Per- and we just like, all right, so he just can kick anyone's ass. He's fucking awesome. And he does. What he needs to do, what he's trying to do is take out a take out the queen, just like a real bee, a real bee. It's like, and dude, the way they're shooting, hey, guys, leave the bees out. Dude, just make an action movie. Just make a movie where the guy's kicking ass, and it's just like, and it's called Beekeeper, dude. And so, so I'm watching this movie, and I'm like, oh, this is... I guess this is going to be the, the, the thing that doesn't work for Jason Statham. I'm like, this is just going to be the movie where it's like, not over. He'll always have a fucking great career. But like, this is going to be the thing. I get, I, the next day I wake up, dude, Beekeeper continues to break Jason Statham's box office record. And I'm like, oh, I, I'm, 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 I, don't, I don't know anymore. Who's, you know what the, always the answer is? When you, when you think, who's watching that shit? Asians. That's always the answer. 
It's always the answer, and that's fine. It's not a racist thing. Asians kind of just like action. They don't give a fuck. The a- Asians will just watch like a a a, a, a movie where a guy, their you know, uh, supernatural ability isn't a thing in the world, but some guy, regular guy, will run uh, and catch up with a plane and then jump onto the wing as the plane's above in the air, you know, and, and Asians will just watch it like, Oh shit. And Americans will be like, they can't fucking, why did, why didn't they set up that the world is supernatural? They have superpowers. Asians don't give a fuck about that setting up world. Right. But anyway, dude, it's a huge hit. Congrats to Jason Statham. I love that motherfucker. I thought it was going to tank, but I guess it's not. I don't know anything anymore. I thought Barbie was going to fucking bomb. I know nothing about this shit anymore. My favorite thing was they were like talking about Jason Statham in a movie and they were describing him. They have so many. It's so weird. First of all, there were so many parts in Beekeeper. They kept introducing new people and they're like, hey, it's my, it's my, you're out of your jurisdiction. It's my jurisdiction now. Fuck face for no reason, you know? And then they described him as like, yeah, he's this big white guy. And Jason Statham was like 5'9", I think, you know? Eh, sir. Wrote it in himself. But um, also wanted to wear the hat himself, you know? But, um, so, I mean, he kicked ass in a movie. I guess it's cool. The action scenes were cool. I want to, I, I got to get ripped, bro. Just for fucking me. I zoned out at the gym. I was at the gym. You know what I'm working on? Fucking pull-ups. I put the 45-pound weight plate on my thing. I did the thing. I, I got five, six of them. And I know people are hating. Like, I put on my story and people are like, dude, you're not all the way up. It's the angle. I did get all the way up. My chin's over the bar. Obviously, it's the fucking angle. But anyway, um, I'm so sore now, dude. My biceps. You know how hard it is to hang on one with one arm? Have you tried to do that? Have you ever tried to do that? Guess what? You can't. You can't. You can't do it. Hang, if you can hang from two, you can do that for like a minute if you're in real tip-top shape. Dude, dude, hey, let go with one. You fall, you break your tailbone, dude. I've been practicing holding them, the shit like this, and just lightly letting one go. Like, I'll just let one go a little bit, a little bit, a little bit. And I was doing that at the gym the other day. Some dude came up to me. He goes, hey, because I had a towel hanging over the thing. So I was holding the towel a little bit and then part of the, the, the bar. And some guy comes up and he goes, hey, what are you doing? And I'm like, here we go. And I say, oh, yeah, it's because I've never been able to hang from one arm. And then I'm saying it out loud like, what am I this asshole at the gym that's just doing dumb as fuck exercises, you know? You see these dudes at the gym where they're like they got like a Bosu ball and a and a and a fucking twenty five pound weight on their head trying to balance and you're like, this guy's a fucking asshole. But he's probably gonna live to be 150 for some reason, you know? And so I'm doing that, and some guy says, Hey, what are you doing? And I'm like, Oh, I can't, I can't, I'm just trying to hang from one arm. I can't hang from one arm, you know, it's really hard. And he's like, Oh, really? It probably helps your grip, huh? I'm like, Yeah. He's like, Oh. And I'm like, now I feel like a fucking fool, dude. Just a 43-year-old comedian trying to hang from one arm. Like, that's my, like, I'm a monkey. Like, that's my goal for the, what, next few months? I tried to get 20 pull-ups. And I got 19. And then I stopped working out for, like, eight months. I'm a self-sabotager, dude. I really am. I aim for potholes. I really am a self-sabotager, man. But I was trying to get up, dude. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to fuck get my, 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 my biceps were so fucking sore that I had to carry my kids later on, and I almost dropped them, dude. They were cramping so hard, and I was, I had little Billy like this. I was like, "Baby, you got to take him. Baby, you got to take him. Take him, dude." I work out hard, man. But I'm a bitch. I really am. I wanted to fucking. I was at my parents' house the other day, yesterday, and the rain was happening. And I got there and my mom was like, can you, dude, it's been so long since my mom asked me to move something because I don't, because I, I, I go, I would go to her house, grow, you know, growing up, like, no, in my twenties, I go back to her house and she's like, good, I'm glad you're here. Can you move? There's a couch. I needed to be, I, I need, you know where I needed to be? Uh, uh, I needed to be up upstairs. Can you bring the couch upstairs? And I'm like, me and who? Dad's out. I don't know. Can you drag it? She stopped asking me because I was like, yo, you always ask me to move shit. Like this sucks, you know, maybe that sounds bratty, but. Here's the deal. She wanted to move stuff just cause. That's why. Okay. That's why. All right. It'd be one thing if it really made sense. Oh, whatever. Uh, maybe I'm bad. But anyway, um, she was like, 
hey, cr- hey, Chris, can you help me? And I go, oh, it's been a while. And she hasn't asked for a while. I'm like, what do you need? And she's like, it shouldn't take too long. And that's the code for it's going to take an hour. And then my dad's like, I'm trying to, you know, dude, it's just like I'm at the age where my parents are just going to. My dad then just says, how come I can't get your special on my TV? Which is so easy. All right. You can. All you got to do is airplay it. That's it. That's all you got to do is airplay it. Now, if you're over 55, you don't know how to airplay. Okay. You don't know how to airplay. So I'm like, all right, well, dad, I'll show you how to airplay. I show him how to airplay. He doesn't have the airplay set all upright. So I'm like, well, dad, you don't have it set up right because the, the, you got you got this on uh, the Sonos and it should be on the Apple TV and then and this and then that. And he's like, oh, well, okay, thanks. So I failed there. And uh, I was just so bunched up about everything going home. What's wrong with me? I was so bunched up going home. Kristen was like, are you okay? Is everything good? And I'm like, yeah, I just... You know, my parents are getting older and shit. And I gotta like... I gotta thank God for the fucking... My kids. Thank God for like the grandchildren. You know? Thank God for them being able to play with them and keeping them happy and shit. Like, And then I'm like, oh, I had Calvin too old and then Billy too old. And it's like, they're not gonna have kids by the time I'm still alive. And then it's like, do I get to have that happiness? He's spiraling, dude. He's spiraling, dude. If you don't spiral, you ain't shit, though, man, you know? I got to come home, and then I come home, and I'm fucking... Now, Kristen heard about this Jackbox TV thing on the fucking Apple TV. So I got to play Jackbox TV and shit. Let's invite, you know, David over and and, and, and play Jackbox. And then I go, oh, that's a fucking... Get to, I don't like games, you know? I'm interesting enough in my own head. I don't need to be like, Spin! I'll just think about the things I want to think about. I don't need to be like, okay, oh, what did you get? I don't need to be like that, you know? It's boring to me. So she wants to play this one game that's like, by the by the way, like, it's about ghosts and then you die if you get the wrong answer and then you have to cut your finger off and shit. And Calvin's there. And I'm like, we shouldn't be watching this shit with Calvin here. And she's like, he doesn't know. And he doesn't know, but also... The thing's like, well, now you have to cut off one of your fingers. And it's saying that. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> you know, while Calvin's, I'm trying to just play with your transformer. And, um, and then Calvin's like, oh, is that you, dad, dad? And I was like some purple monster or some shit. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, uh, I'm like, this is not good. We got to play a different one. And she's like, no, nah, Calvin likes it. And then later on, he's like, I just, later on, he's like, kind of like, this is, it's kind of scary, white. Right? And I was like, told you we're going to, we fucked him. We fucked him up. It's too late. And um, so anyway, we played this other game, which is like a uh, a, a more fun game to me, where you got to de- you got to design, you got to come up with a Jackbox TV, you got to come up with quips and shit. And I didn't really know what the game was, and I didn't really want to play the game, but you're basically a t-shirt making company, and they ask you slogans. So you just write in slogans on your phone, send it to the Jackbox TV, and then they mix them all up, and then they have, now do a drawing of, of, of that you'd like. And they they mix the drawing with, they match the drawings with the, with the sayings. And you vote on them. And whoever, whatever shirt gets the most votes <laughs> is the shirt that wins the competition, okay? Now, let me tell you something right now, dude. I don't like Jackbox, but this is my fucking wheelhouse. Hey, you're just going to play this make a shirt business thing with me? My wife and her friends? You're just going to you're just going to play make a shirt with me, dude? I don't want to, but I got this. All right? And dude, He fucking won! Now, I didn't know this, but he did win. He won. Because they all voted for his shirt. And they knew it was his shirt. How'd they know? Well, I bought the shirt. 
You can buy it afterwards. And I'm a sucker, dude. After Jackbox, they sent a link to the phone and they said, you can now purchase the winning shirt. And I did. You know why? Because I created it. I made it. And it's a great shirt. I had the saying and I matched it up with the right drawings. Here it is. For those of you listening, it's a red shirt with four stick figures on it, and it says, stop jizzing. Dude, this is so ill, and I maybe I could add it to merch, honestly. I wonder. I don't know. If, I don't know. Jackbox TV made this shirt, but this is a killer shirt, dude. Stop j- <laughs> It matches up, you know, because there's too many people in that family. Not really. There's four, but man, that's a cool shirt. I'm going to wear it. I'm going to wear it on stage. I'm on my show in, in fucking Vancouver, you know? Wow. I have two kids. Man, I was on the phone with Brian Cowan the other day, and he's 57, you know, and I'm 43. And he was just like, he was just like, <laughs> we were talking about the rain. This was yesterday? We were talking about the rain. And I was, I was, I was like, dude, I just ride in the rain. Like, I don't give a fuck. It's all good. Like, I, I you know, I, I really navigate through it really well. You know, like I was just telling him we were doing our thing, you know, and he was like, you know what I was thinking of rain is, uh, like when, um, God cries, it's just something I kind of thought of, you know, and I just think it's, I think it's sad, you know, but it's kind of like life, you know? Uh, and that's why I, he said, I look up into the air sometimes when it's raining and I just say, I just look up because I know God's crying and I just say, I look up to the clouds and I just say, they're there. And he started laughing so hard because of how ridiculous he is. And then the next thing he said through his laughter was, I'm 57, dude. And I, I laughed, I laughed so hard because dude, the motherfucker just doesn't stop, dude. Life keeps going. That's why we say life rips. Dude, and the humor will take us to a place. And that's beautiful, man. God damn, dude. They're there. They're there, God. Um, yeah. Stop jizzing. I wish that's what we could call the, the, the um, what do you call it? The episode, but we can't. I should start wearing this shirt. I'm gonna put it on now. No, I'm gonna put it on now. I'll put it on now. I'll see if it fits. Actually, it just came in the mail. That's what Kristen gave it to me. Look at this beefy. I'm not like tattoos, dude. That's crazy. Oh, I got a lot of tattoos. I'm getting more. You think that's it? <laughs> that's not it. Oh man, this shirt. It was made of burlap. Here we go. Does it fit? They only had large. It fits. All right. Cool. I don't look good in red. My mommy said I look good in red once, though, dude. My mommy says I look good in red and olive. She's like, you know, not many people can wear that. Yeah, man. The stuff that fucking moms make you feel good about sometimes is just fantastic, you know? And then and then they can just make you feel like shit, too, can't they? Hear it? Isn't it crazy? Mixed signal city, dude. When you're a kid... Hey, when you're a kid, you get so many mixed signals and you don't even know how to deal with a non-mixed signal. Hey, God, that's not fair. Hey, what the heck, dude? How am I supposed to deal with a mixed signal when I can't even deal with a signal? Hey, God, I'm six. Hey, God, what the heck? This mixed signal happened when I was seven and I'm going to be 50 someday and it's going to be a tape that plays in my head subconsciously every single day and it's going to uproot my life from the belly up. Oh, come on, God. Make my brain completely functional before I'm born. Right? Because it's unfair, dude. And then you have kids and you see your kids and you're like, I can't give them mixed signals. But then he's like, oh, can I, you know, 
can I poop on the floor? And you're like, well, no. You want a knee-jerk reaction, but you go, well, uh, you know, you don't want to fucking shame them, you know? You go, well, maybe, uh, I don't know, but you do know. So you're lying. I don't know. Let's look for a better place. You're lying. Mm. Our parents all fucked us up. And guess what? It's not their fault. Wow, dude. He's so deep and he didn't mean to be. But it's not their fault. It's nobody's fault, right? Something needs to be people's fault. That's why people get so fucking angry, dude. You know. I don't know. But I guess that could be it, you know? Sign up for the Patreon, patreon.com slash Chris We love it if you do. You help the podcast stay uh, afloat. Without the Patreon, this podcast wouldn't exist, so I appreciate you. And go get that extra episode uh, for this month. How many months have we done this so far? It's been t- three years? Three years, almost three years. So there's... 36 episodes that you can go unlock if you go to the Patreon, patreon.com slash Chris And uh, go see me on the road. I'll be wearing the Stop Jizzin' shirt in Vancouver. Uh, probably won't be. But uh, go check chrislea.com for tickets. Thank you.